Hello everyone, this is Minister William, or Reverend Will if you wish, and this is the sermon for September 11th, 2022. And as always, we will well, um, well, let's start with a moment of silence for prayer, meditation, or what have you. I don't know why that was so hard. All right, thank you very much. I did have another sermon uh, picked out, but um, uh, I found another one. I couldn't find any that would relate to, uh, you know, the September 11th attack that uh, everyone memorializes every year on this day. But it's also Grandparents' Day, and this story I found uh, while surfing uh, the web on Facebook. Um, yeah, I have no idea what it's called, but I uh, someone posted it on Facebook, and I found it a year ago and uh, shared it, so it was in my memories. But it's a uh, I figure this is also Grandparents' Day, maybe uh, this is more fitting. I arrived at the address and honked the horn. After waiting a few minutes, I honked again. Since this was my last ride of, the, of my shift, I thought about just driving away, but instead I put the car in park and walked up to the door and knocked. Just a minute, answered a frail, frail er, elderly voice. I could hear something being dragged across the floor. After a long pause, the door opened. A small woman in her 90s stood before me. She was wearing a print dress and a pillbox hat with a little veil pinned on it, like something out of a 1940s movie. By her side was a nylon suitcase. The apartment looked as if no one had lived in it for years. All the furniture was covered with sheets. There were no clocks on the walls, no knickknacks or utensils on the counter. In the corner of in the corner was a cupboard, a cardboard box filled with photos and glassware. Would you mind carrying my bag out to the car? She said. I took the suitcase to the cab, then returned to assist the woman. She took my arm and we walked toward the curb. She kept thanking me for my kindness. It's nothing, I told her. I just try to treat my passengers the way I would want my mother treated. Oh, you're such a good boy, she said. When we got to the cab, she gave me an address and then asked, could you drive through downtown? It's not the shortest way, I answered quickly. Oh, I don't mind, she said. I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to a hospice. I looked in the rearview mirror. Her eyes were glistening. I don't have any family left, she continued in a soft voice. The doctor says I don't have very long. I quietly reached over and shut the meter off. What route would you like me to take, I asked. For the next two hours, we drove through the city. She showed me the building where she had once worked as an elevator operator. She drove. We drove through the, the neighborhood where she and her husband had lived when they were newlyweds. She had me pull up in front of a furniture warehouse that had once been a ballroom where she had gone dancing as a girl. Sometimes she'd ask me to slow down in front of a particular building or corner 
and would sit staring into the darkness, saying nothing. As the first hint of sun was creasing the horizon, she suddenly said, I'm tired. Let's go now. We drove in silence to the address she gave me. It was a low building, like a small convalescent home, with a driveway that passed under the the under a portico. I guess that's the overhang. Two orderlies came out to the cab as soon as we pulled up. They were solicitous and and intent, watching her every move. They must have been expecting her. I opened the trunk and took the small suitcase to the door. The woman was already seated in the wheelchair. How much do I owe you, she asked, reaching into her purse. Nothing, I said. You have to make a living, she answered. There are other passengers, I responded. Almost without thinking, I bent and gave her a hug. She held onto me tightly. You gave an old woman a moment of joy, she said, thank you. I squeezed her hand and then walked into the dim morning light. Behind me, a door shut. It was the sound of the closing of a life. I didn't pick up any more passengers that shift. I drove aimlessly lost in thought for the rest of that day. I could hardly talk. What if that woman had gotten an angry driver, or one who was impatient to end his shift? What if I had refused to take the run, or honked once, then driven away? On a quick review, I don't think I have done anything more important in my life. We're conditioned to think that our lives revolve around great moments. But great moments often catch us unaware, beautifully wrapped in what others may consider a small one. People may not remember exactly what you did or what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. Um, yeah, when I read that, um, I remember the story, and I couldn't think of anything better to do a sermon about. And... Um, I don't know what to add to it. I know I did sermons on helping others and how little gestures make big impacts. So, I guess for this week, why don't you post... The um, small things that others did that helped your life, great moments in your life. Put, and also, um, put, let me know what this church has done anything to help you and maybe people reading how others helped us or if, uh, you haven't had great experience uh, uh, I guess groundbreaking experience with someone helping you won't you put uh, something that you did that you later found out was bigger than what you thought. How you helped uh, somebody else 
and then found out that how much it meant to them later. But, um, yeah, that's all for now. Remember, when we all come together, the possibilities are endless. I will see you next week. Thank you.